Ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Now, I hope you've all had uh, a fantastic few weeks. I haven't posted for a couple of weeks myself because I was in Thailand celebrating a friend's stag do. If you're not from England, that is also known as a bachelor party or I think a bucks party. Either way, by the time I got back from that week-long stint of uh, drinking, I was feeling pretty and so I didn't feel in any fit state to make a video. But here we are, and today I want to talk about Lightroom Denoise, the absolute saviour of our high ISO and noisy pictures. And to be honest, I certainly think it's one of the best additions to the Lightroom program in recent years. And in today's video, I want to show you exactly how I use it in my editing process and at which part of my editing process I use it to get the best results in my images. So yeah, a minute ago I was talking about first how to use denoise and secondly when to use denoise and it's actually the other way around. I want to talk about when to use it first and then how to use it which is actually quite simple after we've gone through that. And to be quite honest, I think you need to use denoise after you've made basic adjustments and ever so slightly before you make any hyper selective adjustments. That's because all of these edits and adjustments that you make are gonna transfer over to that file that has been through the denoise process. And because the denoise process is gonna change, you know, the structure of your photo by removing noise and cleaning up certain lines and things of that nature, it may also affect how your masks are being applied to the shot. So I think it's best to do it after the basic adjustments and say, so let's get cracking with that. Now I'm gonna move the, start by moving the temperature down to around, yeah, 40, 40 let's see, 4800, 4850. I just wanna make it a little bit cooler. And I'm not too worried about these cooler yellow tones, which if you know me, I'm not a fan of, because I'm gonna adjust those a little bit later on with some color grading. Um, but yeah, I think we'll leave the tint as it is. I need to bring the exposure up a little bit. As I mentioned, this is quite underexposed and I think Let's see, around 0.6 is gonna do the job there. And then of course, we can bring the highlights down to bring back some detail in those lights. Now, I'm also gonna remove a little bit of contrast uh, just to reveal some of the information in the shadows there. And as you can see, if I go before and after, for some reason it thinks I've stretched the shot, we're, we're slowly starting to reveal uh, some of the information in the shadows. We're gonna do that more so through this shadow adjustment here. I think we can lift this up to around, let's see, plus 35, plus 40-ish. Yeah, I think that's fine, plus 40. Uh, and now we're starting to see a lot more information in the shadows, but also a lot more noise in the shadows as well. As for the whites, I think I'll bring those down just to soften, uh, let's see, maybe to around, I think minus 20 is fine. I can, I can always remove them in the curve. I just wanna soften the intensity of the whites in these neon lights. And then I'm gonna move the blacks up uh, just to soften the image even more. And of course, to reveal more information in the shadows too. Now, as for texture, uh, I don't want this to be softer. I, I'm gonna move the texture up. I, I wanna bring some texture into the shot, particularly the, the lights and the, the light trails that are running through the shot. And then I'm gonna, you know, on the other hand, take the clarity down just to give it a slightly softer look. It's almost like a budget autumn effect what I've done there uh, in, with the texture and clarity. Vibrance, yeah, we like a bit of vibrance. We'll move that up to 10 and we'll be on our way. Uh, with the tone curve, probably gonna go for something, you know, fairly similar to what I usually create. Earlier I mentioned, you know, about crushing the whites ever so slightly. So we're gonna bring those down. Uh, I'm gonna lift the blacks up as well, just to add a slight bit more fade to this. I think the shadows, I just want to make a teensy bit darker. Mid-tones, I think I'll, I'll definitely give them a bit of a punch. Looking good. And then highlights, you know, they can kind of stay where they are. I think that's absolutely fine. Now let's add a little color grade to this thing. And I think, of course, we're going to start off uh, with the hue. I'm going to make most of these colors warmer, I would say. I probably want to make the yellows warmer. I really don't have this yellowish green we've got in the middle here. I think that's much more suited to this uh, warmer yellow color. It's certainly gonna play against those blues a lot more nicely uh, in, in this way. And the blues, we will move down to minus 20. This is starting to look like a teal and orange edit, my goodness. Uh, if we move over to saturation, I think yellow sat can come down. I don't really like that strong yellow in the middle, just to minus 30 or so. It looks quite nice with the yeah, desat wipe with a more popish kind of red and blue around it, I think works quite well. 
and then over to luminance and I'm probably just going to bring the blue down slightly just to bring more color uh, into those neon signs at the kind of top of the of the building in this shot. All right, so moving on to midtones, uh, I'm going to bump these up, I think, to about, let's see, plus 30 or so. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Yep, bump the midtones up. And then, let's see, down to highlight priority. Does this need a vignette? I mean, it's already so freaking dark. I will add just a minus five, ever so slightly. And finally, let's give it a little bit of a pop. Maybe plus 15 for that. Does the, do the blues need going? Maybe plus 10 to the saturation in the blues. And of course, we're going to move the blue hue down. Just a minus five. Lovely teal and orange tones coming out of here. Let's see the before and after. Before and after. So already looking much, much better. Having said that, we now want to add denoise to this picture to really clean it up. But we don't want to make it too buttery. So we need to be careful with how we apply this. So let's get a denoise. And you'll see it's going to bring up this enhance preview menu. And it's actually a very simple interface. You know, the only thing you can actually affect is this amount slider here from zero to 100. And if we, you know, if I let the image load here and then hold down and let go, you'll see when I hold down, this is showing the without enhance. So actually the image we were just editing. And if I release, that's enhanced and you can see it has a massive effect on the shot. You can see all the color noise here in the shadows, gone. The lines in the, in the sign, much sharper and more defined. It, it does such a fantastic job, honestly. And as I mentioned earlier, you can slide this denoise slider uh, between zero and a hundred. Now I must say, I typically go between 25 and and 40 for any photograph that I'm using. Doesn't matter if it was shot at 6,400 ISO, which I never shoot, or ISO 100, I always use it and I find it always has fantastic results in the end for me. So I think with this shot, I think ISO uh, amount 30, amount 40, I think 40 looks pretty good, pretty happy with that. And with that, we're gonna press enhance and uh, I think we should be done. This is gonna take a minute to load, so give me a second. Okay, that image has finally come through and you can see if we zoom into this, you can see the incredible job that is done. I mean, most if not all of the noise and the color noise that was in the shadows has disappeared. And what I can actually do, if I command and click on our previous shot and hit C, or maybe I'll close this side menu as well so we get a better view of the images, we'll be able to see the difference in the shots after the denoise and before the denoise. Yeah, you can see on the left, I mean, it is so, so much cleaner, it's particularly if I come into this sign and the, the trails that are running through the windows here, so much noise on the right hand side and absolutely none on the left. I mean, has to be one of my favorite tools on, on the app. Fuck, it's so good, man. And I will say, that I'm gonna have to make a video comparing this and Topaz Denoise. If you followed me for a while on Instagram, you might remember that I have, for many years, at least prior to the arrival of Lightroom Denoise, been a huge fan of Topaz Denoise. However, I feel as though this may have knocked it off the top spot. Hey yeah, guys, that's about it. Lightroom Denoise in a nutshell when to use it and how to use it. I hope you found this video useful. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, then please feel free to leave a comment down in the comments. And if you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like. Yeah, okay. Time to get some dinner. I'll see you guys next week.